Today we're going to have a look at stress and strain and in particular we're going to try and work out Young's modulus and I've set up a little experiment here and, and what, what I've, I've got, got is, is I've got, got a couple, couple of wires, wires that I've taken a while trying to get them connected and over a couple of pulleys uh, to a little gauge and what we're going to do is we're going to have a look and see basically all about this Young's modulus. So that's where we're going but what we're going to start with here what's actually going on about stress and strain tensile stress tensile strain so let's have a look at a little experiment we could have a go at doing Wrong Wrong power. Power. Right, right here we here go, we go. No. now we're, we're looking, looking at, at tensile stress and tensile strain. Now basically what we're going to do is we're going to use a piece of equipment to try and measure this but what I'm going to start with is I'm going to take a holder I'm going to put a plastic strip another holder and I'm going to put a mass on here and we're going to see what happens as I add weights to this and see what happens. We'll then compare this with what happens with a wire. So let's go and have a look at an experiment. Now I've set up the other experiment ready to go so what I'm going to do is set up this experiment and what we're going to use are a couple of these strip testers here to see what we can do and I've just gone and got some strips already made so what I'll do is we'll adjust the camera so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now the piece of plastic under test if I just put it through one of these strips it's not going to hold terribly well so someone's come up with a, a more ingenious way of trying to do that and we're going to put this little piece of wire around my plastic strip so I'm going to take my plastic strip and I'm going to put that around here and we're going to hold it by the piece of metal so to set this up what I'm going to do is put my plastic strip through this little gap put the metal rod through and let's tighten this up a little bit pull this through the rod then holds the plastic strip and we can tighten this up doing this we can then adjust the length of this plastic very well and I'm just going to set the other end up so I'm going to take out my plastic strip I practiced with and we'll fold this one through so I'm going to make sure I've got a suitable gap to put my plastic through feed my plastic through and let's tighten up ok 
and there is my little plastic strip ready to go. So let's set the rest of the experiment up. It's not very complicated. What I want is a clamp and we're going to hold that with just a metal rod. And there's my strip. And all I want to do with this is then take my weight. Now I have a nasty feeling that this may in fact be more than that's going to take. So we may need to go and get, could you get me a longer one of these rods please? And I think, having had a look at how long my plastic strip is, I could shorten my strip but I think it's going to be better if we use a longer rod like the one I've got set up for the other experiment. So a slight change of plan. And what I'll do is I'll just take this off. The easiest way is actually to use a clamp. And if it's tight I can undo it. And we'll put a different length rod on. Now this will give me a bit more room to play around with. And let's clamp it up. And that's looking better. I'm going to take the weights off. And we're going to start with putting 100 grams of weight on. Now, this is like the Hooke's Law experiment that we did last time. But last time when I did that, I was interested very much in putting a ruler here and perhaps even a mirror behind it to try and work out how long it was. This time, we're going to do a much more rough and ready experiment and we're just going to have a look and see how much this is going to stretch and the way we're going to do this one is we're not even going to bother to try and measure it we're just going to have a look and see what happens so let's have a look at this strip as we put on so 200 grams, no change. 300 grams, no change. 400 grams, no change. 500 grams, well it's looking a little bit puckered here. But if I take this off, this is returning back. So we haven't got to its elastic limit yet. Let's go, 600 grams, still nothing, 700 grams, nothing, 800 grams, and I've got these lines but if I let go this elastic, this plastic is exactly as it was. It's just stretching just a little bit. And if I let go, is it returning back to where it was? And the answer is, I think not. So let's try one more. Well, nothing yet the elastic is 
here it's it's really taut and if I let go it's not really returning back to as it was but it's still looking like a reasonable plastic bag there's one kilogram and something's happening and at one kilogram this has certainly gone beyond its elastic limit and it has sort of changed so this was a bag from a certain shop and I don't want to mention Waitrose by name so I won't now let's suppose we try this against a different piece of plastic sorry I'm not sure so we'll just undo this quickly and I'm going to set up another one just to give us a quick comparison so that one went quite nicely so I'll stay up there and I've got another bag from another well-known manufacturer and what we'll do is we'll put this one in what I have done is when I cut the strip I tried to make sure it was of a uniform width throughout so we'll put the little metal piece in there pull it through so it's tight to the other end and we'll perform this experiment again just to see how different materials cope and although these are both plastic bags that didn't go in nicely never works when I try and do these things quickly as demos In, in place and let's clamp it in place just basically showing that nothing works quickly and easily in science we set things up and take our time same with the Young's modulus when I set that up uh, the other experiment I've taken a while trying to set that up so the other one went at one kilogram although I felt it starting to go around about 700 let's try this one so 100 200 3 4 Five. and if I take it off it seems to return more or less to as it was 6 7 seeing some stress and strain here 
it's really being strained the material and something is happening here so that's on 8 I'm leaving it for a few moments to see if anything's going to happen we can take it off, it did go back and if I put it back on there we are, there's 8 let's try 9 well 9 it seems to be holding let's go for the same as the other one 1 kilogram not doing anything let's go for 1.1 1 .1. well it's certainly stretched but it hasn't collapsed so this bag would be certainly a lot longer if you took it home 1.2 and we can see that at 1.2 something drastic is happening to the bag and this weight is gradually going down getting longer and longer and longer I see some teachers when they do this they like to cut the plastic to try and make it go better it doesn't actually make any difference to the experiment so this is going at this point and if I wanted to verify that this does let's take it up a little bit higher it will continue stretching not changing the mass at all but discovering that, that this at the top here it's really gone and that height I've raised it by it's going and this is gradually making its way down and if I wanted to kill it we put one more on there and it goes so this is looking at an experiment with plastic let's try the same thing but this time I want to try it with metal so I've got here I've clamped, you can't quite see that, I've clamped a piece of metal here, I've clamped this basically to the surface and I've tied two pieces of wire here and one goes one side to one pulley over here and the other one goes to the other pulley over here and these wires have now got a little weight put on them it's just 100 grams just to hold them taut now in some schools what they do is now they put a marker on the wire they put a ruler down here and with a marker on the wire as they increase the weight that we're going to put onto these wires then they measure how much this little flag moves along now that really is going to be very difficult to see because the amount of stretch in this wire isn't going to be very much so down at this end of the business what I've done is I've put a piece of equipment let's just come out and have a look and see what we've got here so sitting next to my fire extinguisher I've got the two, two wires, wires attached to this piece of equipment this first wire is my reference wire and it's attached to a hundred gram mass on the other side we've got this one which I'm going to change the weight and we've got here 
a vernier scale and we can use this to read what is on and what's progressing as I start to do this. And I'm going to move it round a little bit, I think that's a bit clearer. And we can read what this is to start with. Now, how does a vernier scale work? Well, let's just try and show you this. What I've got is I've got two scales. Not one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Now, this is the fixed scale, and that's the one on this side here. This is my fixed scale. And the other one is a slightly different type of scale, and you'll see that it's not quite the same length and what we do is when we measure this scale I've got my numbers here and let's say I've got my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 I haven't quite got those so what I'm going to do is let's make this a little bit bigger so here's my naught so this will be my 0.1 0.2 0.3 0 0.4 and so on and against this scale we can read the other numbers so maybe this is going to be there this one's going to be there this one's going to be there, this one there, and this one there. Now, let's have a look and see what's happened when I've done this. So, let me zoom in. Well, this one's not lining up. This one's not lining up. But this one is. So, on this scale, I've got my naught, one, two, three and so on. Now this one's measuring up so we know we're at naught point something. We haven't gotten the naught point one yet but we've got to naught point naught three. And if you look carefully on this scale Do I need to go in a little bit more? Are you happy with that? Can you read it? I can read that one as 0.04. So we're starting with 0.04. So let me just zoom out on this. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a set of results. So I'm going to put a mass on here and I'm going to start with 100 grams and this is at 0.04 so this is my extension and that basically is going to be my reference point this is going to be 0.00 because this is how badly I set the experiment up I couldn't get this any more accurate than that when I was trying to set it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to add on 100 grams at a time. The 100 grams I've got on two wires. The first of these wires I'm not changing. So this is my reference wire and this is going to take into account anything about heat, anything else that might affect the wire, it's going to stay and it's going to do exactly the same as the other wire. So if both get warm, both will stretch by the same amount. So that's my reference wire 
and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens as we add masses to the other wire so I've got my recording ready to go and we've got the experiment here, here. Ready, ready to go, go. we, we can, can see that the setup is, is all here, here. the wires are taut I've got my masses ready to put on and, and so, so let's, let's have, have a look, look at what's going to happen so I'm going to move my chair out of the way and I'm crawling on the floor now I've hit the plug which one? that's right we lost the camera We'll, we'll just, just see, see if we can get the camera back. back. So we'll, we'll see, see if we've got, got the camera, camera back. back. No. Right, so there's just a little bit of panic as we go around. I've unplugged this camera at this end. And hopefully... We'll get it working again in a few moments. Or we'll have to replace the camera. see what the problem is. Right, have you got the camera back? Nope. So a little technical hitch we're having here with the camera. And we'll just try it once again. There we are, I've got a camera now. Okay. No idea what we're going on there. Perils of working with live television. So let's put on, as carefully as I can, an extra 100 grams. Now it's going to move around a little bit. And there's not much more I can do about trying to get that settled. And let's see if we can just record what that value is right so there we are i'm sitting on the floor right paul i can't I'll read, read that, that from here, here. Can, can you read, read what the value is uh, 0 0.05 0 0.05 so that's going to give me an extension of 0 0.01. Let's put 300 grams on and see what happens here. So I'm back down on the floor and what I'm going to do is put another mass on here. So there we are, we've got 300 grams on here. 
reading the scale same. the same okay so we're not seeing any difference here so let's try 400 grams so let's take my 400 grams, let's take my extra 100 trying to make sure it doesn't move very much at all I'm going to read this Okay. and no change so we've got 0 0.05 is also 0 0.01 we may find that these actually none of them have changed yet so let's carry on we've got 500 grams now to put on so if I scramble around here and I've got my next mass to put on so here we go And again, no change. No. I pressed the wrong button so we've got one more so if I can can you press the button for me so let's put this one on as carefully as I can and then we'll move the camera in So that's 600 grams. And I've got a, a shaking of the head saying no difference. We'll now go for 700 grams here. Come in to read no change well let's have a go again and I think we've got a change here so this is 0 0.06 is it and we've got here we are 0.02 so that's a massive 800 grams let's go 900 grams and see if anything is going to change 
on this. So let's bring the camera out again. I'm not expecting a change here and I'm not disappointed. We're now up to one kilogram on this. So there is one kilogram I can't see any change let's go to One, see I'm running out of paper already. Let's bring this out. One point one. Still about the same really, it might be fractionally off but it's still still about the same. So I've got 0.6. I'm now going to cheat and go on to an extra piece of paper here. So 1200 grams. and I may have to do a little bit more in the way of cheating along here so now it's not going to balance quite as well because what I'm going to try and do is I've got to put a second set of masses on here and unfortunately they don't seem to make a nice hook to go on the bottom so what I've got to try and do is that. So we've got 1,200 and what I'm going to do is take some of these masses off here and we'll try 1,300. I don't like having to do this because it offsets it a little bit and that's not really good. I'm really not happy with how that's going. I'm looking at this weight now and it's all tipping. And I think I'm going to stop there actually because the whole thing is now tipping like something's actually gone wrong with it because that should have been more level and if I've got that more level then I've actually got quite a different result. So what I wasn't appreciating here 
is this rod was not sliding nicely down. So I'm looking at here quite a difference. So that's my equipment failing. And it's this just not sliding through nicely enough. So I am getting quite a change on this. It's just that we're not seeing it working because here, as you can see, it hasn't worked properly. And taking this off, I'm seeing that this wire seems to have stretched. And so my experiment has gone wrong. Oh, I've got to start again. Science. Experiments don't always work every time, which is why when I do this, that we need to do this several times. When I do this live, it doesn't always work and so when we do these experiments and we set them up we do use them do them several times we practice them we get them working we practice this one it worked we try it again it doesn't the second one something's gone wrong uh, so the only thing i can do now is to repeat this experiment again and again and again and I would typically do any of these experiments probably about three or four times at least usually I would probably go and do them as many as ten times I want to get consistent results and here stress and strain well it's not working so I've got no values to try and work with so this one this experiment has to go in the bin and what I can do with this one is I can just make a whole video on Young's Modulus Stress and Strain. You've seen, however, how we get materials deforming. You can see how experiments do, in fact, go wrong. And rather than do all this again, which I will do, what I'll do is we'll work on this one and bring you back the results of one of these in another short video. So I'm sorry that one didn't work. You've seen how experiments go wrong and me getting puzzled that uh, it should work and it didn't. So with that, well, thank you for watching and I'll have another go. And if you like this, then please subscribe and what we'll do is I'll see you next week when we'll do some more A-level physics, topic by topic. Till then, bye-bye.